hitting the road again for more grand days out around our beautiful country. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. And as always, taking me every mile of the way, my hard-working little camper van. <laughs> Named after one of my favourite people, Helen Mirren. Are you happy, Helen? Yes, I'm having a lovely time. She's the perfect travelling companion. <laughs> for great adventures, on foot. I've got my own boat. <laughs> all across the country. Eh? Eh? I'll be going all out. What a treat! To find stunning places. Oh, it's beautiful. Explore hidden treasures. Nick! Look at this place! And meet wonderful people. They're very good, Jimmy. It's a celebration of some amazing sights. Oh, I love it. Both big. It's the vastness of it. Wow. And small. <laughs> so come and join me. <laughs> on my grand days out. This time... This is extraordinary! I've set sail to explore the magical Isle of Man. John, big strokes. I'll discover vintage gems. It's a beautiful sound. The tooting. Live life to the max. <laughs> Enjoy the very small. You can fit this in the back of Helen. And extremely large. This is what I call a grand day out. Although it sits nearby in the Irish Sea, as a self-governing crown dependency, the Isle of Man has its own laws, traditions and language. Which means Helen and I have left the UK for the very first time. When I was a kid, we used to go on a holiday to an island uh, off the coast of Scotland. There's just something about going on holiday to somewhere that's an island just makes it seem a little bit more exciting. And I'm kicking things off in the island's only city, Douglas. Splash through some puddles, why not? Sea is as calm as anything. Beautiful little castle out there. Palm trees blowing in the wind. And you can see all the way around this bay. And tropical plants aren't the only surprise here. So something I didn't know about the Isle of Man is that the Bee Gees were born here. They're very proud of it. There's a statue here in the promenade to them. They are giants, which of course they are musically, but in real life as well. But what I really adore about this is they're in their famous kind of Saturday Night Fever strutting pose. And this is exactly the same walk I use after I've had a really nice dinner. But the best thing is, you can hold hands with them. Thanks, Bee Gees. And I'm sure you can tell by the way I use my walk, it's time to get back to Helen and plan my route. It's an extraordinary place. It's got beaches, it's got mountains, it's got little narrow roads. It's, it's a lovely place to explore with Helen, but to keep us on the right track, we have some specific destinations we wish to arrive at. Many UK visitors first set foot on the island in Douglas. From here, I'll head to the pretty port of Peel. Discover Victorian heritage in Laxey. Go on to enjoy speedy thrills in Jerby before completing my adventure overlooking the island's tiny neighbour, the Calf of Man. And that's what I want to do, get a wee taster of the Isle of Man. Right, fold it up. Off we go. There's a little bit of wind. Not from me, from Helen. <laughs> it's a bit windy, but we're all right. 
and a tailwind could help propel us to peel just that little bit quicker. Vikings ruled the Isle of Man for centuries, until 1265. As well as building Peel's imposing castle, they left behind precious artefacts that are being discovered to this day. It's lovely to have a wee people watch at the beach. So, and there's, I mean, there's a woman down there and she's metal detecting. She seems friendly enough, even though she's got a spade flung over her shoulder. I'm gonna see what she's up to. Sorry to bother you. That's all right. I spotted you from up there. <laughs> and I thought, I know what that, that person's doing. I'm Susan, what's your name? Hello, my name's Kath. Kath, lovely to meet you. Now you're metal detecting. I am. I'm out detecting quite a lot, yes. Yeah. I, I would say I'm obsessed with it. <gasps> <laughs> oh. I started detecting about five and a half years ago. I retired from the police and I wanted something to do. I wanted to keep myself fit. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I got my first signal with the detector, I knew that was it for me. What kind of things have you found? I have been very, very lucky. I've found a Bronze Age sword. And it had been broken up in antiquity mm -hmm. and it's been placed back into the ground. That's what they used to do with metal. I took it home to my husband and laid it out in front of him and he said, you've, you've missed a bit. So the day after I had to go back, he threw me a picture of what I would be looking for. <laughs> and so I had to dig up again and I managed to find the handle of the sword. So I've got wow. the complete sword and it's only the second complete Bronze Age sword that's ever been found on the Isle of Man. Wow. What other kind of history can you find? I've actually found two Viking hordes. Viking? Viking hordes, yeah. Kath's finds, including a silver brooch, gold arm ring and 87 coins have proved to be so significant that they're now on display in the Manx Museum in Douglas. But some of the Viking sites here are a little too big to be put behind the glass. If I were you, I'd go and have a look at the Viking boats. Mm -hmm. Just go and ask for Jimmy. Ask Just for around Jimmy. the corner. And because I say you've sent me, You'll say hello to me, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell, Kat. Thank you so much. Thank you, See lovely you soon, to darling. meet you. Bye. Thank you. Peel is extremely proud of its Nordic roots. And every year, thousands gather from all over the world for the annual World Championship Viking Longboat Races. And it turns out Jimmy is one of the race organisers. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Peel. Thank you. Apparently, you know quite a bit about the, the Vikings, and I see we're standing beside <sighs> this incredible boat. How faithful is that to the kind of boat that the Vikings would have used? We've actually had boats from Norway come call into Peel, and one of them that came in was over 100 foot long. Wow. At 37 feet and two and a half tonnes, Jimmy's boat, the Vital Spark, is somewhat smaller. Even so, it still requires a crew of 10 to row it. I've been on lots of boats, and I don't think I've ever been on a boat with this many people rowing in it. Would you mind if I kind of sat on board while you yeah. went for a row? Would that yeah. be okay? No problem at all. And today, these experienced Vi Kings and Vi Queens will be doing all the hard work. Thank you so much, Nigel. Lovely manners for a Vi King. Let's go, Jimmy. Right, let's go. Just watch your bats. Watch your bats. I'm just repeating what Jimmy says, because it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I may not be rowing, but I certainly don't mind sticking my oar in. Nice, easy stroke. Nice, easy stroke, everyone, remember. Well, they're like caged animals. Well, give, they give just it. want to go for it all the time. Well, we'll release them in a minute. And lean on the oars, then. Big stroke. Jimmy and a crew once rode for 12 hours to reach Scotland, 30 miles away. Three. Two, one, dip! But today, they're just training. 
Now, Jimmy, you didn't warn me about the handbrake turn that was about to happen. And evidently, Manx Vikings train really hard. Gary's gone purple at the back. Come on. <laughs> We may not have travelled far. Go on, big strokes! But it seems being authentically Viking comes with blisters. You're right. What's up from rowing? On your hands? He's not the only one with battle scars. I've got a callus on my finger from playing tennis, so I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely know how you all feel. Yes, I'm sure this crew know a warrior when they see one. Coming up, I live life on the edge. I mean, it's one of those decision points in life, isn't it? Do you want to stop the tram and look over a cliff edge or not? And go for a really big spin. Oh, it's going at some pills! Oh, my goodness! I've officially left the UK for a grandy out on the wonderful Isle of Man. I'm at the fishing port of Peel, where the local kippers are contenders for the island's national dish. And at Moore's Smokehouse, they've given an old bus a new lease of life. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, I'm Susan. What is your name? It's Jennifer. Jennifer, lovely yeah, to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's my first time on the Isle of Man. I've been told that a kipper is what I need to have. Is that right? Yes. I I'll be really honest. Mm -hmm. I have never had a kipper before. Okay. I think you'll love it. What's the best way, way for me to try a kipper on the Isle of Man? So you want your kipper on a bap. A kipper bap? With marmalade, lime marmalade. A kipper bap with lime, lime marmalade. marmalade. Jennifer's not kidding. I'm a bit nervous about this, actually. Apparently, the marmalade plays a vital role. Helps with the indigestion. I mean, I love the honesty. <laughs> It'll help with the indigestion. <laughs> I'll not be honest. And it's not the only unusual thing you can do at this eclectic smokehouse. Fill out your card and we'll send you two packs of the best kippers. So I could post a kipper to someone you from here? You could post a kipper to someone from here. I mean, no problem. It's, a, it's an unusual holiday souvenir. That's it. This I'm is ready my for you. you. Thank enjoy. you very much indeed. Much Thank appreciated. You. Thanks Thank very you. much indeed. The locals also seem very keen on kippers. Seagulls. And it's not just the birds. Just having a kipper bat. <laughs> Thanks very much for doing it. It's very nice. That is absolutely bang on. That is absolutely lovely. I think my dad would probably love a kipper. And what I'll do is I won't tell him. It'll be a surprise. And he'll open up the post one day. And I'll have sent him a kipper from the Isle of Man. And I'll make sure he eats it with marmalade. Visiting the Misty Isle has inspired me to compose what could be a new national anthem. It's raining on the Isle of Man. Hallelujah. It's raining on the Isle of Man. Da 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 da. And thank goodness for that because half an hour east of Peel in Laxey, there's an amazing place that puts all that water to a very good use. The Isle of Man is all about atmosphere today. We've had a lovely drive through the foggy roads here safely, I hasten to add, but I love the fog, you know. It always makes me think of swishing through Victorian London, which is handy, because I'm about to see an incredible feat of Victorian engineering. Despite appearances, the Great Laxey Wheel isn't a fairground attraction, but actually the world's largest surviving original working water wheel. 
happened in 1854 to pump mine water, this Isle of Man icon has been a popular tourist attraction ever since. And Wheels Supervisor Danny is giving me the honour of turning it on for the upcoming tourist season. It's not just a decorative wheel, is it? it? It was built for a purpose. Tell me about that. Um, so what she does, um, she pumps the water out of our mine. So under our feet at the moment is a very, very large lead mine. She collects water from just up uh, the valley there. And through an underground pipe, the water travels down. And uh, due to the height difference to where the water's collected and the top of the tower, it forces the water up the centre of that tower. It drops into the top of the wheel there and the wheel starts to turn. But there are stairs and platforms. Was that built so people could come and visit the wheel and see the beautiful scenery? Oh, definitely. Um, I've always considered the Victorians to be massive show-offs, but it is, at the end of the day, just a piece of effort it is for uh -huh. pumping water out of the mine. But um, the engineer, Robert Casement, who designed and built it, um, was quite forward-thinking, so he also designed it as a tourist attraction. The Great Wheel has a diameter of over 72 feet, but getting it going is surprisingly simple. Turn it clockwise. Clockwise. You'll be turning it around 15 times until it stops. Danny tells me this opens a gate to let water flow from the top of the tower. It's making noises. I mean, this could all be a cruel practical joke where I'm just turning a wheel for the next 15 minutes. The wheel has 168 24-gallon water buckets. And as they fill, the enormous machine gathers momentum. I mean, what I think if we were in a theme park would be termed the splash zone at the moment because, oh, it's going at some pills! Oh, my goodness! This is extraordinary! It's like a giant Ferris wheel that's been built for a practical purpose, but it's just as much fun as if you're at the fairground. Wow! This is amazing! And now that I've officially opened the great Laxey wheel... Oh, I love it. I'm delighted to be its first visitor this tourist season. Can I go up right up to the top? Yeah, you can. OK. I'll take it slow. Thank you so much, Danny. That's You're a right. superstar. Have fun. There are 96 steps to the top of the wheel. Oh, my goodness. And the climb is certainly worth the effort. Even on a day like this, it's so impressive. It really is. It's like being on a giant ship in the middle of the countryside. That's what it kind of feels like with the flags and the wheel. You're just seeing this vast expanse of the Isle of Man. Oh, I love it. This is what I call a grand day out. Absolutely brilliant. They love water wheels in Laxey, and there's even a 50-foot mini-me not far from the original. But as I'm still drying out, I'm confining myself to Helen to indulge in a popular camper van pursuit. I've never actually tried Sudoku before. Sudoku, Sudoku, Sudoku before. Um, but I've always seen people do them and they look very, very intelligent. So I thought, you know, it's the kind of thing that when people walk past and they recognise Helen, not myself, they might look at me and think, she's got glasses on. Very intelligent. So I'm just going to try and do a little bit of Sudoku. <coughs> Just numbers, isn't it? So just how difficult can it be? The magazine's broken. It doesn't work. It's not working, is it? Because I can't put the six there, and I can't put the six there, and I can't put the seven there, but it doesn't work. And now I'm all dried off, I've got a chance to hop on board another of Laxey's impressive vintage attractions. Oh, 
opened in 1893, the Manx Electric Railway still uses its original Victorian and Edwardian rolling stock and even features in the Guinness Book of Records for running the oldest operational electric tram car in the world. The lucky fella who gets to drive a bit of living history every day is Andrew. Hello. Hello there. Good morning. Andrew, it's lovely to meet you. We're standing beside this incredible vehicle. Tell me about it. Well, this is tram number seven, and she was 129 years old, built in, my maths correct, 1894, so she'd be celebrating her 129th birthday in July this year. And it's one of about 14 operational trams we've got. What's interesting about this is it's not just for tourists, it's used by locals as well, isn't it? Is, it is, yeah. I mean, primarily its, its function now is, is tourism, but <laughs> certainly towards the north of the line, it's quite a remote area with no bus service, so yes, we still get quite a lot of locals that we're using the tram, so they jump on the tram, mm -hmm. go into Ramsey, get the newspapers, get a bit of shopping and come back and then as come well. back again. Did you ever think when you were a, a wee boy that you'd get to drive the Always tram? wanted to. You always wanted always to? Always wanted to, yeah. Oh, so it's a dream come true? It is indeed, yeah. Oh, this Won is the gorgeous. Jackpot. Yeah. Do you mind if I, as a passenger, enjoy it? You're more than welcome if you want to step on board. Brilliant. Susan. Thank yeah. you very Thank much, you. Andrew. Thank you. Running for over 17 miles between Douglas and Ramsey, the track is the longest narrow-gauge vintage electric railway system in the British Isles. Here we go. And today, I have the tram all to myself for a trip to the highest point of the line. I always think I'm a bit fascinated by trams because my granny used to tell me stories. About the trams in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> she used to tell me stories about the trams in Glasgow that she used to ride, and I, they were gone by the time I was born. It's a joy to see this beauty in action, but it's not just a feast for the eyes. Old trams and trains, it's the noise. Yet yeah, it's not silent, but you, it's a beautiful sound. The creaking, the tooting. <laughs> he loves that toot. <laughs> See what you like about Andrew. Loves a toot. We're up on Laxey Head now. Laxey La Head? Laxey Headland, if you can see the beach and the small harbour to the right yeah. now. We're getting a bit higher up now and we've lost the trees. We've got to watch out for the wild goats up here because wild there's, goats. there's loads of wild goats. They seem to be all hiding today, unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look out for goats. Yeah. Goats, goats, goats on the right hand side. Oh, it's a little baby goat. It's a baby goat with its mum. Not only do I have the tram to myself, Andrew's even had the track cleared of all traffic to arrange an unexpected treat. We can, if you want to, we can get out and have a look over the wall at the view. Something that we normally don't do with the passengers. This feels like something we should be doing. I mean, it's one of those decision points in life, isn't it? Do you want to stop the tram and look over a cliff edge or not? Well, when would I get another chance? With, I'm with the driver, this is safe. Careful, and what I'll do is put the handbrake on. Handbrake on. And then right, you lead the we way. jump off. Come on, then. For goodness sakes. And we can go over and have a look over here. OK. Andrew tells me this unique viewpoint is almost 600 feet above sea level. And on a clear day, which unfortunately is not uh -huh. today, if we look out over there, you can see all the, all the coastline of the, of the Lake District and the mountains. So the Lake the District's over there? Over there yeah. yeah. Imagine, that. imagine yep. the Lake District's over there. Despite the mist... It's perfect, absolutely perfect. Andrew's clearly shown me why the Manx Electric Railway is regarded as a national treasure. Thanks very much indeed. It no feels problem. so wrong. It feels so wrong yeah. to be stopping the tram. Right. We should get back on it again, shouldn't we? Let's carry on. <laughs> Come.
coming up. I seek an audience with the island's president. He's expecting you. Oh. Please head up the stairs. That sounded slightly sinister. And meet Helen's minuscule Manx cousin. Fast and furious. I'm enjoying a grand day out on the gorgeous Isle of Man. Something I absolutely love is when the gorse comes out as well, these little pockets of yellow. There's some pockets of sunshine, like Helen. Not me, obviously. Roughly 20 minutes south of Laxey lies Douglas, the Isle of Man's capital and centre of government. Housed in a Victorian building but thought to have originated in 10th century Viking times, the Tinwald predates Westminster by hundreds of years and claims to be the oldest continuous parliament in the world. So this is clearly one serious place. Whee! I love a whirly door. Act responsible, Susan. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm here to see the president, if that's OK. Yes, he's expecting you. Oh. Please head up the stairs. That sounded slightly sinister. He's expecting <laughs> me. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. See you later. Meeting the president would be exciting at any time, but it's sort of giving me West Wing vibes. Now, if you don't know, the West Wing was an incredible television show set in the White House, and they pioneered the walk and talk way of doing business. They were walking, they were talking, they were busy. And I'll let you into a wee secret. That's how we do things on this show. What do you think of the speech? Famed for its clever choreography and wordplay, the West Wing walk and talk is something all of us in telly would love to master. That's great. Thanks, Thank Jamie. You. Have a lovely day. Thanks very much indeed. Lasagna for lunch, if that's OK. So, everyone, lot to achieve today. We can absolutely do it, though. That's brilliant. Thanks very much indeed. Um, when we get to the next location, they'll really focus about... Um, take that one. Thanks very much indeed. Really focus on what we're wanting to achieve, if that's all right. Um, I think I think lasagna for dinner would be the best thing. Um, absolutely. Could you actually take them for me? Cheers. Thanks, Alex. So, uh, now... Whew, Let's meet the president. Brilliant. What can I say? I really love lasagna. Mr. President. Susan, please come and join me. Lovely, thank you. Mr. President is also known as the Honourable Lawrence Skelly. Any <laughs> interesting facts or details you can tell me about, about this parliament? In 1881, we give women the vote. Mm. So we were the first nation to do so. Yeah. New Zealand disputes it, but we believe we, we were the first nation really? actually to, to give women the vote. So one of the reasons why your parliament is so old is because the Vikings were the first ones to sit. So it's a, it's a Viking parliament in a way that's then mm. evolved from there. Yes, yes. And, and the word Timwald is quite similar with regards to other Norse nations. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear Tin Thing, Tin Valor, which is all the same thing, the meeting place. So can I have a look around in the, the chamber next door? Is that OK? And we uh, currently have a debate, actually, in Timwald mm -hmm. about the national dish of the Isle of Man, so I'm sure you'll find it of great interest. Oh, I'll tiptoe in, I promise. Please I won't do. interrupt. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, good on my... Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Can't wait to see this ancient parliament in action. I think chips, cheese and gravy should be the national dish because you've got the chips, you've got the cheese and you've got the gravy. And with kippers, you've only got a fish. Politicians obviously start young here. So I wasn't expecting it to be kids. They're doing brilliantly. By holding mock debates, the Isle of Man government hopes more of its citizens become interested in Parliament. At the moment, they're too little to be caught in the Isle of Man. I think it's about kippers versus chips, cheese and gravy. Queen scallops were voted the Manx national dish in 2018. Thank you, Maggie. Nancy? But clearly the next generation have other ideas. Kippers does have vitamin D and vitamin C, but chipsies and gravy is a bit unhealthy. 
I disagree with what Jacob says. And I must admit, I did enjoy the kippers. Even though kippers are liked by the older people, sooner or later they're going to die. My favourite is the argument that people like me aren't going to be around much longer, so it should be up to them to choose what they want to. <laughs> I think it's time for us to vote. This could go either way. Looks like it's chips, cheese and gravy for the win. Yeah. Well done. That was absolutely brilliant, everyone. That was really wonderful. Great arguments from both sides. It seems the future of the world's oldest continuous parliament is in very safe hands. I think I might go and get myself some chips, cheese and gravy now. Well, I really must. After all, the people have spoken. Nice smooth road, this. Don't mean to sound in any way boring, but I like a nice smooth road. I mean, it's not a tourist board slogan, but, you know. Visitors have flocked to these roads each summer since 1907 to watch the Isle of Man TT race. <laughs> it started when UK law made racing on mainland roads impossible. And whilst the sport is a bit too rapid for me, Jerby in the north of the island is home to an amazing place where motorised marvels can be admired all year round. Wow. This place is absolutely huge and brilliant. There's just cars as far as the eye can see. The Isle of Man Motor Museum is home to hundreds of rare and unusual vehicles. With a few almost as pretty as Helen. I think this would be considered a bit showy around my neighbourhood. Do you know what I mean? It's the kind of car they'd think, come on, Susan. You're just going to the supermarket. The collection includes historic TT racing bikes, customised creations, and even an ex-White House Lincoln Continental. This treasure trove of motors grew from the passion of Darren Cunningham's father, Dennis. Darren, it's lovely to meet you. This place is extraordinary. So many different types of vehicle. Tell me how this all started. So the kind of the core of the collection was um, developed by my dad, really. We ended up with sort of a hundred odd cars and then we decided to just, right, let's, let's go for it. Let's build a museum. We've got sort of 500 odd vehicles on display in the museum now. What is it that you get out of this? For me, it's 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 a bit of everything, really. It's, it's the design of some of the cars, the history. The, you know, some we've got some that are of sort of real historical significance. Anyone who comes in, hopefully, they'll they'll see at least one vehicle they've never seen anywhere else in the world before, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what we try and do. What's the one which really, when you come here, you're not going to see it anywhere else? It might be the the Queen's car we call it, mm -hmm. which was a, a, a 1954 Humber that was built and used by the the Queen and Prince Philip on their coronation tour uh, of the Commonwealth. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a really special, so again, historically significant car. So, Darren, would you mind, because I'm always looking for the perfect car for me, um, do you mind if I have a look around and see if I can find it? No, oh, of course, definitely, go yeah. for it, yeah. If you really do find the perfect one, we okay. might even let you drive it. Challenge accepted. See you in a bit, Darren. <laughs> If I won the lottery, I'd probably buy either Kit from Knight Rider car or a Ghostbusters car. Because just imagine, every journey would just be incredible. I mean, who are you going to call? Me and one of them. This is a very intriguing car called La Femme. It sounds like the less glamorous when I say it in a Glaswegian accent. It's called La Femme. 
because it was marketed specifically towards women. I've always been of the opinion that anything that's specifically for lady drivers is not for me. I mean, it's lovely, but uh, La Femme, this Femme, no. It's nice, not for me. However, there is something in the collection that could be the perfect fit for me. Oh, oops, in we go. Can we go? <laughs> what a treat! It's very dinky. Even smaller than Helen, if you can believe it! Listed by the Guinness Book of Records as the smallest production car ever made, the PLP50 still feels rather roomy to me. <laughs> One of the unfortunate things is I, I'm still struggling to reach the clutch pedal. It's like being on a dog jump. Pew, 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 pew. Built on the Isle of Man in the early 60s, this miniature motor cost less than £200 when new. You can fit this in the back of Helen. But these days, the originals are so rare, they can fetch over a hundred grand at auction. <laughs> so I'll just have to content myself with a quick spin. Round and round and round she goes. I can see a future for myself in stunt driving in the world's smallest car. <laughs> Fast and furious. But my style is more slow and steady. Speaking of which... Don't worry, Helen. I'm coming back to you. Coming up. When I go down to the woods... I'm a lean, mean, speed machine. I'm in for a big surprise. It's a bit slippy in the mud. I'm having a wonderful grand day out on the magical Isle of Man. La, da, da, da. Sheep. If you're playing the uh, game of Grand Day at Bingo, sheep. That's one point. Tree. Another one. There are thousands of trees where I'm heading next. A huge forest near the village of Foxdale, around 30 minutes south of Jerby. The atmospheric South Barrule Forest Park covers hundreds of acres. And I'm told the best way to explore this outdoor adventure paradise is by electric scooter. <laughs> I just hope my guide Simon can get this e-scootering rookie up to speed. Simon, lovely to meet you. You too, Susan. In this beautiful forest location. Got such different scenery here. There's the beaches, there's the mountains, and these beautiful forests. It's just so unique. You know, yeah. lots of people ride bikes and run and stuff, and electric scooter coming downhill can be quite invigorating. I'm sure it is, but only if you're fully in control. So, your brakes, same yep. as the push bike, front brake is on the right hand side, back brake is on the left. Little thumb throttle. Yeah. The less you press it, the slower you're going to go. So that's go. your acceleration. Don't be worried, it's not going to shoot off at 100 mile an hour. Okay. It's only going to get up to 10 mile an hour okay. if you choose to. If I choose if to. If you choose to. The choice is mine. Well, seeing I'm here. We're off, we're off. That's quite interesting. Which is another way of saying, scary. Bend the knees, relax. As if you do this every day, Susan. It's a bit slippy. It's a bit slippy in the mud. Oh, there's a wee dip. There's a wee dip. So take, take the left. Take Ooh. the left. 
Got a fright. Let's read it. But at last, I think I've found my feet. Nice big stretch here. And now there's no stopping me. I'm a lean, mean speed machine. At this rate, I might even hit that 10 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm making the cameraman run. Quite a peaceful way to see the forest. Because it's electric, so it doesn't make a lot of noise. Simon was absolutely right. My e-scooter trip has been a thoroughly invigorating experience. To be honest, I was pretty nervous about this. Didn't know what to expect, never been on a scooter before. Bit worried. But do you know what? This is absolutely brilliant. It is the most fun I've had in a forest in a very long time. Don't blink or you'll miss me. <laughs> My first trip to the Isle of Man has been truly wonderful. And my final destination lies almost 12 miles away at the southern tip of the island. I've covered a lot of ground on my grand day out and the viewpoint overlooking the island's tiny neighbour, the Calf of Man, feels like the perfect place to end my adventure. When I came here, I was hoping to recapture some of that childlike enthusiasm for holidays I had when I was younger. And in many ways, what I've done here reads sort of like a list I would have made as a kid. You know, when I go to the Isle of Man, I want to meet the president, I want to go on a scooter and I want to eat a kipper bap. And I've done all of it and I've loved it. In the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, a man who is as big as an island, I'll be back. Next time I'm in the heart of the country. Right in the centre. In lovely Lancashire and Morecambe Bay. My goodness, you can see forever. Where community spirit is strong. And a great double act was born. And so are some of the locals. I tell you what, I am taking you down. <laughs> I'll fall under the spell of this impressive county. And I probably have been oh. accused of being a witch. Most well, definitely. And all it has to offer. I've never felt more like I'm in Florida <laughs> in my life. <laughs> You've got an amazing life here, Laura. I'd hate to see you throw it all away from a moment of madness. I've not been able to stop thinking about you. Our family means so little to you. I feel like I'm going slightly mad. Like everything's suddenly falling apart. Yes, gripping new drama on Channel 5 and My 5 for Her Sins starts Monday night at 9. Next tonight, Britain's most scenic railway journey.